Hey everybody, I hope you're having a good day. I'm going to do a quick pour, well, a swipe. I actually probably going to do two swipes. I'm going to use Deco Art products today. And one swipe is specifically going to be a request. Um, she didn't request a swipe. Nisa, who is one of my loyal followers, and she's also a patron of my Patreon page and just a huge supporter of me and I really love her half to death. She's requested that I do a yellow azalea and I've seen pinks and purples and hot pinks and whites and all that azaleas. I, I don't think I've ever seen a yellow azalea bush but maybe once. I think I might have in Florida or somewhere and I know that's where she lives so they're not common around North Carolina, but azaleas are gorgeous, and I love painting real flowers. So what I thought I would do is do a swipe, let it dry, and then do a second video on embellishing that swipe. So that's my plan. And then I'm going to do another swipe today and probably embellish it as it is wet. So to show you two different options is embellishing it while it's wet or doing a swipe, letting it dry, and doing a later video on painting over it. So all of my products today are Deco Art and I'm mixing everything one to one with Oatrol Easy Flow. This is the same thing as Floetrol. And with one to one ratio with Oatrol or Floetrol, with Deco Art paints you do not need to add water at all except for the premium paints that are in tubes, they do require a little bit of paint to thin them down. So what I do is I mix everything one to one in a cup and get it to the perfect consistency. And then I add spot on treadmill lubricant and I do one drop per ounce of paint mixture. So let's say you have a cup that has four ounces of paint mixture in it, which is two ounces of paint, two ounces of Floetrol or Oatrol. That's four ounces of paint mixture. So you do four drops of silicone into that cup, stir it up, and then you transfer it into your squeeze bottles like I love to use so much. And I love my squeeze bottles. They are in my Amazon link below the video. And I keep this around just to show you. This is what a set comes like from Amazon. There's eight, eight ounce bottles and they are really cool. They have a small opening at the top. Whoops, I took the whole thing off. They have, they have a screw on lid, which is the number one thing that I love. The number two thing I love is the fact that the tip is smaller. So you have way more control coming out of these bottles. And the plastic is heavier plastic. It's not as flexible. These bottles don't leak. So they're just really good, good bottles. They have measurement lines on it, but I don't ever pay attention to those. But So all of my colors in the squeeze bottles have probably some treadmill lubricant in them. And there's a chance that if I finished up a cup of, say, yellow paint and it had OGX in it and I needed to use it up, or I just poured it into my yellow bottle. So it might have some yellow with OGX and some yellow with silicone mixed into the bottle. It does not matter. I'll still get cells. So I also have something under my paint here that I'll show you in just one second. So the colors I'm using today, and I'm going to use a combination. I don't know what colors I'm going to use, but I wanted to show you everything real quickly. Deco Art Extreme Sheen Copper, Metallics Rich Espresso, Deco Art Premium Quinacridone Violet. Then I have Cadmium Yellow, Orange Flame, True Red, Bright Blue, Ultra Blue Deep, Peacock Teal, Festive Green, Desert Turquoise, Sour Apple, Sweet Mint, Purple Rain, and Dioxazine Purple. So those would be all of the colors I'm using. And then I also, of course, have always black and white. So 
So I have me a new toy. I ordered a puppy tray. This is the, a plastic tray. It's made to go in the bottom of a kennel. And so this one is maybe it's 21 inches deep Thirty-five, thirty-six 36 inches long. So a, like a yard across and 21 inches deep. And so I'm going to tape my paper down, which I already did on that side. This is my butcher paper that I love. And it's actually 30 inches deep, so that works pretty well inside of this um, tray. But I thought hey, I can save my table, save my butcher paper sometimes, and just do it in a tray. As long as it's nice and level, that's the main thing. And we're going to see here in a minute if it is. So usually I have this taped down to my dining room table. And obviously when I move to my studio, I won't be painting on my dining room table anymore. I will be painting on an actual work table, but it's still going to have my butcher paper and maybe the puppy tray. If I go larger, I may or may not use the puppy tray. So I have a small level. So this tray has some um, give right here. It's plastic. So it's level this way and the, it apparently buckles up on this area right here on both sides. So hopefully with the weight of the canvas and all it will weigh it down a bit. Today I'm going to pour on a 12 inch canvas. And then the other one I'm going to do on a piece of glass. I actually, I think I'll start with that one and then the next video will be on the canvas part. So I bought this at Michael's. This is one of these called, it's called a quick frame. So the frame is plastic. This part is plastic and it has a thing to hang from the top. And so it has like a piece of uh, like black cardstock in it. So I'm going to take that out and keep that for something else. And then here's, you know, what was behind the glass. But this is an actual piece of glass. And that goes, and what it does is it snaps down into the corners here. So it, the glass gets loaded in from the front side, which is interesting. But I'm going to pour on the glass and then it's going to eventually go in this frame and I'll show you that on another video. So like I said, this one is going to be a swipe. It's going to be the background for some artwork later on once it's dried. So I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit. Try to get it this spaced out about the way I want it. So right now that's level. So with swiping on a background like this, where it's just going to be the background for some artwork. I tell you what, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to put a base coat down. You don't need that much paint, and especially on glass. And is there any prep work for glass? No. You can clean it with alcohol to get any residue off or whatever, but otherwise it is good to go. And then after I do my artwork on it, I'm going to seal it with a high gloss varnish and that will protect it. And once it cures, it's perfectly okay. It's going to be hanging on a wall. 
you won't be able to scratch it you can actually probably dust it and everything so you know obviously if it's painted on glass you can't walk up and scrape it with something metal because that might scratch the paint off but otherwise you're going to be okay so I want to do this one I want it to be kind of a background for the azalea flowers so I want greenery so I'm definitely going to use my peacock teal and my festive green sour apple I am going to use a little bit of yellow and maybe I'll throw in a little bit of orange and maybe a little bit of the magenta the quinacridone violet color so maybe I'll squeeze in a little bit of that in the background well actually I take that back I'm gonna put a little bit of turquoise the sweet mint and maybe a little bright blue in with the green colors so that that is the background I'm not going to put too much yellow because the flowers that I'm going to paint on it later are going to be yellow azaleas. And I'm going to swipe with, I've got some self-mixed navy right here. I have not even opened this up in a while. I don't know if it has silicone in it or not. I'm not worried about that really. I'm just going to see how thick it is. It's pretty thick. So I'm going to add some of my water mixture that has a little bit of oatrol in it but I want this mixture to be nice and smooth and kind of on the um, the damper side you know more wet and fluid not damp I'm looking at my paper towel and thinking of a damp paper towel still too thick I keep my water in a plastic ketchup bottle and I don't care if I stir it either because I don't want huge cells I want really kind of the smaller cells when I do swipes like this that are kind of gonna be kind of like a gardeny background looking that looks leafy so that's pretty good right there okay so I think I will start I don't have much of this color left take it all the way to the edge of the glass and then I'm going to do some festive green And you don't have to worry about edges with glass because you're not going to see the edges and it's not like a canvas so you don't have to have extra paint for the edges which is a good thing put in some of this desert turquoise And the sweet mint which is a pale a really pale turquoise it's almost almost white but not quite I want this to be a really pretty complement to the yellow flowers when I do paint them so I get some of this sour apple and see I do want lighter tones as well especially swiping with the navy I don't want all my colors that are under the navy I don't want them to be super dark because then there will be no contrast when I swipe if that makes sense to you it should I'm not going to use a bunch but I'll throw in a little bit of yellow here and there because yellow is going to be the color of my azaleas that go on top of this and I'll throw in a little bit of white let me zoom in just a little bit too so you can see a little bit better 
and I think I'll put some purple rain just as bits and pieces in it as well because purple is the complement of yellow on the, on the color wheel. So sometimes I like to have just a little bit of a, the oppositional color in a pour or in the background or whatever just to give it some contrast and pop. Um, I've already done white, so I think I'm pretty good on the colors. So now I'm going to lay down this navy. And then I have, I have a damp paper towel ready. I like to use good quality paper towels like um, these come from Sam's. They're members mark, but I like Viva and Bounty and I don't, I don't use cheap paper towels when I use them for swiping and all because they'll fall apart on you once they get a little bit damp and good quality ones will not do that. So what I'd like to do is I kind of fold it up a little bit so that I don't have paper towels hanging down in the way because sometimes it's hard to maneuver as you can see so I'm going to lay this down and it is damp but not like wet wet it's just damp lay it down in that navy And it didn't go to the edge here, so I can just take the edge of my paper towel that had paint on it and put it there to touch it up. And then I'm going to go down here. At the very end, there's just a few spots that don't have paint. The good thing about painting on glass is you don't waste really much paint at all. It's really kind of nice because you don't have to worry about a canvas, you know, sinking or moving or tilting. Glass is perfectly flat. It's immovable pretty much. So that's the good part about it. So sometimes the edges don't get enough paint and you can just always go back and kind of add paint on the edge if you need to but it, that's pretty well covered. And I did pretty well without making a huge mess. I'm proud of myself. I know that there's some drips on that side, but... So it's selling up beautifully and the cool part about it is when it does this, it almost forms leafy structures that almost look like clover or something like that. It's just really cool to see how they develop. You can use a heat gun and I have a heat gun here lately. I've been using the torch just because my heat gun is kind of hard to get to it right now. And I'm just doing it in the area where the cells have not popped through. I obviously don't need to do it here where it's already doing so well. I am going to take it and turn it around. And these are still going to pop up as, as it goes here. Another thing you can do is take a straw so 
so basically what it does is it <clears throat> it breaks up that surface tension it breaks up that surface tension and allows whatever paint is under that navy to pop through and so it's almost down to the bottom and I don't care if there's some deepness here at the bottom because I'm going to do the azaleas anyway so I think I'm going to leave this one just as is I like it I think I'll bring it up to you even though it's kind of close already but just so you can see the detail. That little bit of purple will be a nice contrast to the yellow flowers when I paint them. But see the perfection of those cells? They just do their own thing and those like, like that yellow right there, how it just burst into these little blossoms of leafy looking patterns. It's really cool. So what I'm going to do is scoot this over and get it out of the way. So that was nice and simple. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Click on the links below and I will list all the colors that I used, the deco art colors, and there's the Amazon link, there is uh, PayPal, Patreon, my website, my Facebook group, so please come join me there and also come over to Instagram and find me Sandra underscore Let there and connect with me so we can uh, get to know each other better. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.